Hey saddle hunters, I am really excited about this review I'm bringing you today. I have hunted from a lot of different saddles. I own a lot of different saddles. I started with the Kestrel and then I went to the Mantis and I currently own the Mantis and Trophy Line Ambush Pro and I own a JX3 Hybrid and I own this one that I'm going to show you right now. And of all of those, now the JX3 is kind of in a little bit of different category, but of the more traditional style saddles this one has become my go-to and is currently my favorite and preferred saddle this is the arrow hunter kestrel flex and it's the latest iteration in arrow hunters kestrel line they started with the kestrel and then they came out with the kite which was really just a lightweight mesh version of the kestrel and now they have the kestrel flex i pre-ordered this as soon as I could and so I've got one of the earlier ones and I've been thrilled with it. I hunted with it most of the 2019 season, was able to kill a real nice 10 point buck here in Ohio out of it as well as a doe in the kind of late October time frame and then I took my twin brother out and hung above him while he shot his first deer from a saddle. So I, I've seen a lot of use with it this fall. It's a proven saddle. I'm going to go over the features with you in the next couple minutes here and then talk about a few of the things that I really like about it and then some of the things that I think kind of get on my nerves I guess. So the saddle is very well constructed. Arrow Hunter is known for fantastic top of the line construction when it comes to saddles. I'll give you an overview of it starting by looking at the back of the saddle. Now this, this saddle is designed with a pleat in the middle of it. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this to you but I'm going to do my best. But there's a pleat down the middle of it. and. When it's closed, it's about the same size as the traditional kestrel. Now, with the pleat open like that, the seat is, is significantly larger. Now, the other thing that that adds, maybe you can see better from a side angle, is, is it creates a little bit of a cup. And I have found this saddle to be the most comfortable of any saddle that I've ever tried. I don't have to sit in this thing with a back band. I can sit there for hours and hours and hours. I, I don't ever have to adjust it. It's just fantastically comfortable. And I think that's because of the pleat. I own, like I said, I own the Kestrel and this is far more comfortable than I could ever get in the Kestrel. I, I had hip pinch problems and really I had to wear the thing super low and it was just, you were constantly fiddling with it. No fiddle factor for me anyway with the Kestrel Flex. Sit down, boom, you're ready to go. Now, uh, some of the features here besides the pleat, that's the big one. The, the body of the saddle is Cordura and then on the top and the bottom there are two main support webbing straps. Arrow Hunter runs two lines of, of molly loops and what I like about their molly loops is they're, they're open. I don't know how well you can see that but they're open just enough. It makes it easy to run webbing straps and attachment points through. You're not fiddling around struggling to push stuff through there. Really well thought out. The lineman belt loops are right at the front of the saddle. They brought them farther forward from in the Kestrel model. They have reflective threading on the inside of them and they're super stiff. They just stay open. They work well. They're not the largest loop in the world but with the reflective threading and a, and a headlamp running on red light I could see them just fine in the dark. The bridge loops are reinforced really well. They, they've got this red reinforcement on the bottom once again with glow in the dark uh, or reflective rather stitching. Just a nice touch. Not, not something you would expect but just nice to have there. Uh, the, the waist belt buckle I think is two inches. It's an ADF Raptor. So very easy to use. Just pushes in and then these tabs push to open it. Now this is probably my biggest complaint with the Kestrel. You hear that? This belt is just a noisemaker waiting to happen. Now, 
it's easy to modify in some senses. You, you can take this out and wrap that inner bar that creates the noise. I don't know how well you can see that in there, but there's a bar inside that rattles around. You can wrap that with some tape. That'll quiet it down a little bit. I've just found if I'm careful, I cinch it tight when I'm walking into the woods at my car. It's not that much of an issue, but that's the one thing that does get on my nerves. I, I, the belt's just noisy. Um, it's got a metal buckle here, tri-glide, I guess you would call it, to keep the straps contained. You want to make sure that that's not rubbing up against the metal there. Another thing to keep in mind, they do come with this nice little saver clip, I guess, to put the tail end or the tag end of your strap in. That's a nice feature. Overall, waist belt, very robust, but a little noisy. Um, the leg straps. The leg straps come on the bottom. It does not matter which side they attach to. Once again, smaller version of the ADF Raptor buckle. This happens to be the same size Raptor buckle that Tethered uses on the waist belt of the Mantis. Good buckle. This one's a little bit quieter. You know, you could get a little noise there, but you cinch them tight, not a big deal. I have chicken legs. They have so much extra webbing on here, it's just kind of nuts. Um, but they do include these little, you know, keepers to kind of keep that rolled up. Nice feature. I've just found they're huge. But if you're a bigger guy, you know, this is going to be able to adjust. Both the waist belt and the leg loops are going to be able to go to fit anybody. This is a size 1. Um, the size 1 Arrow Hunter Kestrel is the same size as a large Mantis, just for reference. Now, obviously, with the plate here, the seat of this is bigger than, than the tethered product. A couple other things I want to point out to you here. The leg loop straps are reinforced with a ton of stitching. They're not going to rip. They're not going to break. Another very well-constructed piece of the saddle. Now, when you buy the Flex, there's three different bridge options. You can get a sewn-on adjustable webbing bridge where it's sewn on both ends, or you can get a kind of a webbing bridge that's adjustable, but it's just sewn on one side, uses a carabiner on the other, or you can get a rope style bridge. I had the rope style bridge on my original Kestrel, found it to be very bulky, just kind of a pain, and I didn't like having the carabiner. To me, to step through to save that weight is no big, no big deal, and I'm going to do that every day of the week. I went with the sewn on webbing bridge, and it, it's fantastic. Uh, it's, I, it's just great. A uh, couple things I love about it. This, I have heard, is rated to 4,000 pounds, this heavy-duty tri-glide right here, but tons of adjustability on the fly by using that tri-glide. All you got to do is slide it through, and you can, you can change the size of the saddle. I'm not going to do it because I got it right where I want it. But on the fly, in, in the, hanging in the saddle, you could take a little weight off and adjust it. It is sewn on both sides. They really nailed this part. It's sewn very tightly to the bridge loop. You can see how, how tight that is on there. What I have found is that I can run it in, in the middle, but if I need to make an adjustment as far as comfort-wise, say I want a little more pressure under my bottom or, or I want pressure more up towards the top of my back, I can slide these sewn loops, and because they're sewn so tight, they'll stay put. I can slide them higher up the bridge loop, and they'll stay there, or I can slide them further down the bridge loop and they'll stay there. For me, it's just been great. I'll slide them and they don't, they don't move around. And I think that's because Arrow Hunter has sewn them on uh, so tight. Great feature, best I've seen yet. Um, one other thing I wanna point out to you, I have used the Molly loops to attach Night Eyes gear ties. I have three of them. I typically run three Hawk helium climbing sticks that are modified to be 24 inches step to step, I believe, for my climbing system. I'll attach one on each hip with these Night Eyes gear ties. The one in the middle, I'll attach my platform to, and then when I leave the ground, I'm not making a second trip and everything hangs from the, the saddle. Now, you're talking, you know, what, those sticks are two and a quarter pounds a piece, plus the platforms uh, just shy of three and a half, you know, so you're talking, you know, four and a half pounds, three, you know, you're talking almost eight pounds, and and it hangs very, very 
nicely. Uh, I don't find it to be saggy or uncomfortable, just, just robust in its build quality. Want to give you a weight on this saddle. Now keep in mind we're going to deduct about an ounce for all of those Night Eyes gear ties that I have on here. Arrow Hunter advertises this saddle at just under two pounds. Let's see what we come up with. Two pounds, one ounce. So we're going to call it two pounds even since I've got those Night Eyes gear ties on there. So that's uh, about 14 ounces heavier than the Tethered Mantis of a similar size. Not bad as far as, as, the, as weight goes. It's not super, super heavy. I'll show you one of my complaints about the saddle. Besides the buckle, the other thing that's really just bothered me, this won't bother a lot of guys. Maybe I'm, you know, too easily bothered. But the inside of it seems to have some sort of a spray-on coating on the Cordura. And, and it's rubbing off. Um, so you can see there, it's just fallen, fallen off. And function-wise, the Cordura is still there, so it's not affecting it at all as far as performance. But it just kind of looks trashy, makes it look cheap and beat up and old. Uh, I've got a little bit of fraying on random parts. Once again, not a big deal, but you can see it's, it's wearing off down here. On the bottom as well. It's done it on both both sides. Um, I've seen some that are far worse than this. I, I have not had any disconnecting parts of the saddle. You know, mine's not not ripping or anything like that. But that's just kind of a ugly looking, you know, wear and tear. But performance wise, it's uh, it's not a big deal. I went with the Predator Camel. I hunt with all Predator Camels, so just went with that to match. Looks really good in the tree. Uh, I've got a lot of brown on mine, but, but that's, that's fine. You know, I think it looks good. So, fantastic saddle. Um, I've killed a, killed a couple deer from it, hunted with it a lot. It's the most comfortable saddle I've ever sat in. I, I have no qualms about recommending this to, to anyone. Other saddles, I've got to use back bands. I did with the Kestrel, I did with the Mantis. This one, I don't have to wear a back band. I just I f open that that pleat, I guess, and I sit in it, and I can stay there, and it's just comfortable. Hardly have to adjust. Love the bridge. It's it's just a fantastic saddle. Well built, comfortable, best I've found yet. Um, looking forward to see what what they and other companies come up with in the future. But but this has been my go-to after testing a lot of them out. I hope this review is helpful to you and don't be afraid to try it out. Every saddle can be comfortable. Some just take a little bit more fiddling and adjusting than others, playing with the bridge height, playing with the tether height, uh, or the bridge length rather, tether height. This one, I just slammed the tether somewhere between my chin and my forehead and sat in it and that was it. Just no fiddle factor, so it was great. But anyway, I hope this review is helpful. Fantastic option, not real heavy, supremely comfortable, good for all day sits. I wear it walking into the woods. It's, I'll say once I get my pouch on it, it sags a little bit more than like the Mantis did, but, but nothing unbearable. And it doesn't obviously pack up as small. So for the person that's looking to go the most minimalistic route possible, if you're gonna shove it in your pack or something like that, um, there are better options out there. But as far as a, a quality saddle that fits the bill for comfort and just overall um, flexibility and purpose, this is a fantastic option. Highly recommend it to you. All right, we brought you the tabletop review of the Arrow Hunter Kestrel Flex, and now I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the Kestrel Flex in the tree and how I like to, to run it. This particular saddle, I run the waist belt just slightly above my belt. I find that I don't have to wear it low at all. Above the belt helps me miss any kind of hip pinch that I might have whatsoever. I mentioned in the tabletop review that you can adjust the bridge up and down and it'll stay put. I probably run it about an inch to an inch and a quarter off the higher end of the loop on both sides. And I'm a sitter, so I adjust it so my knees are about you know, 90, 100, 110, 120 degrees off the tree, just like this would probably be pretty typical. And uh, when I sit down, I, I loosen the, 
leg straps just a smidge and uh, this is how I'll sit you know I, I did probably some six seven hour sits in this thing last year I tagged out pretty early really at the front end of the rut and so I didn't do any all-day sits but I tell you with this thing you can just sit there and hardly ever have to readjust in my experience it's that comfortable I typically run the pleat all the way open and so it just it just cups you really really nicely um, let me show you a little bit here on the bridge how that works if I slide it down to you know below center on each side and then kind of put my weight into it for the most part you can see it will stay below center and I, I get a little bit more tension on the strap under my butt if I do that run it right in the middle and uh, a little bit more evenly distributed I like to run it just slightly toward the top do a little more weight kind of up higher and uh, I find that works good for me the this saddle is excellent I have I really have no complaints uh, other than the bulk factor of the buckles and some of the stitching is, is getting a little bit worn which is kind of disappointing I didn't do many, tons of hunts in it last year because I tagged out so early um, and on the inside it's got some wear uh, mostly cosmetic thing but that may may be something to be aware of um, other than that I, I find it excellent you know if you're a leaner I'm I'm not much of a leaner but uh, you know you can you can lean just fine in this thing too I, I once again when I lean I like to have the pressure a little bit higher up so I don't really adjust the bridge at all but if you want to change your pace for a couple minutes you just lean back like this and plenty comfortable so this is a phenomenal saddle highly highly recommend it and I really like this bridge option the, the sewn in yet adjustable webbing uh, I think it's excellent uh, I, I don't see any problem with stepping through the bridge to get it on and adjust easily just fast I don't play with it a whole lot I find once I got it set where I liked it I, I left it there but that's about it I, I hope this is helpful to you just to see it in, in action and how how it fits and how it's comfortable for me hopefully you can take away a tip or two and uh, have a more comfortable sit next time you're in the woods hope you've enjoyed this video